Good day. Hello. Happy Saturday, the 1st of May. Let me just uh, share this as an unlisted link, so uh, you'll just have to bear with while I get this set up. And I need to share it uh, to a couple of places for my channel supporters to have a look at first, and then we shall go public with this and premiere it in a few days. Okay, so coming on Momento. Thank you very much for your patience. Take a note of the title, DVLA Agency Relationship Correction. All right. I'm just gonna have to go let splspro.com private domain know and also Indiglo. What what? Thank you for joining. I will sort some music out and a little bit of a screen, um, what should we call it there? Video drop, backdrop for the screen. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, switch accounts a second. Tube, we shall begin. Hope you're all well. already rushing <laughs> just posted it publicly when it's for my channel supporters on the private domain and it's been posted on lit indie but only the supporters can see that and then I will uh, download this and upload it to indie and we will premiere it or I'll play it on SPLs whichever whichever happens first nearly there That's that, um, I just need to check something. I've got my correct files open, especially edited for you to today for you today. I need to put a disclaimer out that I am not showing my estate's private um, documentation. These are generic um, documents right blank because to do so would be futile, but I can give you the basic premise of the GDPR requirement. And then um, the notice, affidavit, and etc. that I'm sending additionally to my previous uh, contact with the DVLA over the years, all will become clear very, very soon. Don't expect. A high amount of viewers now because it is Saturday. 11 11. Wow. <laughs> By accident on the 1st of May. And it's not public, so. I hope this goes to plan and I hope you are suitably pleased with my works. A lot of hours have gone into this. It isn't easy. The subject of my life's work, what I'm showing you here. All right, so you may choose to donate and later on if you find this beneficial you may go to our home pages at splspro.com you may uh, as you please i'll put some links into the chat now on the video description okay it's just gone into the chat there and then if you, you can't see the chat for some reason Look at the video description and link to our home pages and um, you can come and be a supporter with us on our private foundation educational trust or you can perhaps use the paypal button um, i have plugged into obs 
the trust's PayPal donation account, so that should work well. Without further ado, we're going to uh, begin. You don't need to wait much longer. Pardon me, I've got a bit of a rumbly tummy this morning. Uh, I haven't had any breakfast yet, so uh, if you do hear <laughs> strange gurglings, that would be to me. Hallelujah. It worked. Okay then. So once again, these aren't private trust documents or estate documents. What you're looking at these are generic these are uh, templated for what i shall be displaying later and uploading once they have been perfected they're 95 percent done i'd like to go through a little bit of a proofread with you okay so uh, that's not the right button let me see if this one's a bit better go for that one I was right the first time. Here's the postman lady. Hopefully there will be no knock. <laughs> One minute. Please walk past. So let's see what we're looking at on screen here. You should be able to see a notice. At the top, notice to agent, notice to principal, notice to principal, there's notice to agent. Look how the word principal is spelled. We are the principal, P A L, not P L A. Notice the word principal and how it's spelled there. We are the principality of the source of energy, life, and credit. Some of you have asked us how you would lay out a notice to conform with um, the correct justification, justified. If you look at Word or uh, any open office um, application for office, letter writing, notice, construction, you'll notice the, uh, the language there is justified, justification. So you see um, the top right, we have Jane Doe, care of, Sov Road done the address as uh, the location as X is it would be England you would, uh, if you reference a postcode put them in the postcode in square brackets address is non-commercial without the UK the reference number and the date that's red to remind me you know, so I can easily see that things need changing so I've just been and taken out private sensitive personal person's data and I've uh, edited it so uh, it's uh, not showing anything of that nature. On the left, lower down, you see how that's laid out there and we go forward. It's to Miss Julie Leonard, of the registered office of the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, Longview Road, Swansea, all of that. So registered England and Wales, there is a Duns number telephone, switchboard, fax, there is a website for the licensing agency, Julie Leonard. And it can go CC to um, the principal in office. That would be the agency then, it's self-explanatory. It does say driver and vehicle licensing agency. Put this here so I can see what go on. All right, so that's why they, they name themselves an agency. If you're wondering my terminology later on, remember that later going down mr grant shaps the transport secretary his email for the department of transport.gov uk telephone fax then we've got the department for transport address and duns number there we've got a total page count so that lets them know how many pages in its entirety that's wrong that needs editing now because i've extended the document the universal postal union postal special delivery number Okay, to insert there when you obtain from the post office uh, the, the point of sale for postage or livery, delivery as they call it. When they give you that sticker to put on the outside of the envelope, you would ask them to take off the little strip that references that big strip 
that big sticker that they put on the external of the uh, envelope and you would put onto the inside notice here, letter, etc. Depending on what you're sending, generally notice the thin strip and that will go in that space there. And uh, it states what type of livery, delivery it's had from the post office and then via Royal Mail delivery. But you notice the agent is noticed the principal. It's private and confidential. And we begin with the first paragraph here. This is not a letter. Do not treat it as such. It is a notice served to you under the doctrine of notices and the subject access code of practice. This is a data, a general data, GDPR and a data subject access request, what we're doing initially. Uh, any failure to comply with the above acts will result in a claim being raised with the Information Commissioner's Office who consider such failures as criminal offences. Dear, it's not to Julie because she's not the data controller. She will be passing it on okay, to the data controller for the DVLA. So dear data controller, protection officer for on behalf of DVLA, we hereby give you notice that, the, that we require a data subject access request for the above referenced the above referenced there. Including all documentation, voice recordings of all telephone interactions, correspondence records appertaining to both named private persons. It's no longer both, so that will need changing because this is a, an edit of a previous one I've done to another company this week where there was two parties. Now there's just one party. Um, the party that's mentioned in this instance the principal legal embodiments, Jane, Jane Doe, page one of five. It's got notice to agent, notice to principal at the top of every page under the Office of Fair Trading, OFT, and the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA regulations. We strongly suggest that you make yourselves aware of the obligations and requirements placed upon you by the OFT, FCA. Now, capital letters underlined. Um, danger, stranger, with regards to uh, foreign text, mixed text, glosser, and so forth. And um, I do believe I would need to put on there. It is written for the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt. You will see on the next notice that I'm going to do afterwards. So, um, as we're speaking non legalese and it's just a notice, uh, that doesn't really matter too much. But um, you could maybe, I may be removing that. Um, underlined and bold lettering type font but we'll move on all right that's just a little thing to notice all right firstly we would like to draw your attention to article 4 definitions of the general data protection regulations GDPR for ease and to save time we have highlighted a few of the more relevant articles that must be complied with you've got some definitions personal data you can screenshot this and read it at your own leisure I'll pause it OK, and then you can check it and it saves me from reading it. Profiling, third party, consent, relevant and reasoned objection, fundamental rights and freedoms of data subjects, personal data breach, recital one data protection as a fundamental right. All right, not unalienable, not common law, not constitutional, but a fundamental right. Recital two, respect of the fundamental rights and freedoms. Article five, GDPR. Article six, six GDPR sets out seven key principles, lawlessness, fairness and transparency, purpose limitation, data minimization, accuracy, storage limitation, integrity and confidentiality security, accountability. These principles should lie at the heart of your approach to processing personal data and must be proactively demonstrable. Demonstrable. See recital 40, sorry, not demonstrable. That's not my words. It's taken exactly as it is from the um, GDPR, so demonstrable. See recital 40 GDPR for reference of art article 6. And you've got Article 7, Conditions for Consent, 13, Information to be provided, 14, again the same, 16, Right to Rectification, 
17, right to erasure, right to be forgotten without undue delay. See recital 66, to be forgotten. Uh, Article 18, right to restriction of processing. Article 21, right to object. See recital 69, right to object. And remember that all companies are required to hold the correct legal information on their files if they knowingly hold incorrect information on their systems legally. That's a no-no. Right, and they're obliged every 12 months to validate and check the data they have on their systems it, that it is correct and conforms to um, these um, articles, rules and policies. Down. You've got more articles there which I'll let you screenshot 22 to uh, 40 right, which ends at the code of conduct. And then we're going to go from 40 and it's got chapter 5, 8, 77, 78, 79, all the way to 84, ending in penalties. Article 82 is especially um, useful one to take note of, which is uh, right to compensation and liability. If they breach, make un unauthorised transitions or anything that uh, damages, uh, breaks, breaches you know, data transmissions and so forth, and you have a right under Article 82 to compensation and hold them to account for their liability. The Data Protection Act 2018, there's a link to the legislation.gov.uk here, which can be clicked. I do believe, and if all works well, as with the links in our documents, I make sure they work and then you will get taken to, all right, so then you can use your own due diligence and double check what we're looking at, okay. And for the recipient, the respondent can also do the same. Meaning of an applicable period, all right, it sets out and defines the applicable time period as per the data protection that's referenced above. Let me go back into more references. Okay, and we've got more, a link there, legislation.cov.uk. Right, obligations of credit reference agencies. And that um, applies where a credit controller is a credit reference agency with the meaning of section 145, paragraph 8 of the Consumer Credit Act 1974, page 3 of 5. I do believe there are five pages on this. Actually, I believe it's right. Soon see. And we've got uh, various uh, sections under 13 obligations of credit reference in agencies. There's paragraph one, and we've got continuing on, paragraph two and three. All right, then we've got a link to the ICO org media for organisations documents for them to read reference code of practices. There's a PDF link there. Just check that that works because I haven't. Ah, page not found. I'll have to sort that one out. There's another link to the ICO there. Accountability, governance, code of conduct. That one's correct. Codes of conduct. All right, so that's from your ICO. Information Commissioner's Office. So there's a lot in there. I think the other one, the other link I've just showed you is in there somewhere. Um, all right, so you can see how much there is. There's a lot lot to go through look pages and pages paragraphs and sections the human rights act 1988 schedule one part um, article one article eight respect to right to respect for private and family life okay so everyone has the right to respect for his or her private and family life their home and their correspondence there should be no interference by a public authority with the exercise of this right except such is in accordance with the law and is necessary in a democratic society in the interests of national security, public safety, or the economic well-being of the country, for the prevention of disorder or crime, for the protection of health or morals, or the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. So it's fair in all ways if there's a criminal element, national security, homeland security, ter terrorism, counter-terrorism teams can then for various reasons. Article 14, prohibition of discrimination. 
okay the enjoyment of the rights and freedoms set forth in this convention and to we say that word very important shall be secured without discrimination on any ground such as sex race color language religion political or other opinion national or social origin association with a national minority property birth or the status so you see in here that the gdpr and the uh, schedules articles paragraphs within that are a lot stronger referenceable under international um you know uh, fundamental rights than common law magna carta constitution which we've said to you are futile a lot of you to think that human rights are pish pash um hokum and rubbish but uh, they're very strong under the uh, the, the of law the force of law the ministerial codes okay so you appoint somebody who's trusty in office they're governable under um the ministerial code state ministers are uh, governed by and you will have heard, heard and i'll go into this later on the next document that i'm going to uh, send to the dvla along with this one all right there's going to be a covering letter as well as i'll show you later uh, we've got two documents for today, the GDPR and then the export emissions notice, uh, affidavit and etc. that's coming second to this. So Human Rights Act 1988, Schedule 1, Part 2, the first protocol, protection of property. Um, property is subject to, um, to many things, it's generally public. Okay, not unlike an asset which can be private and protected in a trust, property is subject to orders for taking control of and it resides generally in the public, public property. So we take note of that and there are reasons why we move property from public into private as assets and sometimes um, protected within private trusts. You can have a legal trust or a lawful trust, Abrahamic, religious, social, political covenants, you know. And you can have legal, you can have ecclesiastical, and you can have a, a chat about that later. So therefore, there's a screenshot for you there, all right? Then we go down and say the meaning of this notice. For the avoidance of doubt, this notice requires you to do all of the following. You can screenshot that, all right? On page four or five so far, so we're doing well. I'm letting you screenshot, learning not to waffle, keep it concise, show you the power, you know, the reasons why we don't use common law for defense of property. We don't use Magna Carta. We certainly don't use constitutional. We don't use UCC um, with regards to this. We use trust and equity, governance, trust law, equity. And equity comes in many forms, legal, ecclesiastical and Abrahamic. Okay, so that's as we brought to you via our Christian disclosure, and you have the right to choose whom and what you are, jurisdiction, jurisdiction, jurisdiction. Grounds for notice. That needs nudging down a little bit as I've converted this into a PDF from a DocX document. It's, uh, it's reshuffled it somewhat when it's encoding to PDF. There's your grounds for notice then. It's got A to G. This top paragraph there going down to the no exemption from the position set out in the data protection act 2018 and general data protection rules and like what we get to told and sent um, to our offices on behalf of our legal person what you must do next okay well, which i'll put at the top of the page like they say to us we also Use their own rules back at them, or the, the, the rules, the fundamental rights and freedoms, entitlements of. They have got one month of receiving this notice to give us notice in writing, stating that they have complied with the position, provisions of this notice in full, or that they have complied with the provisions of this notice in part, stating which parts, and three, as to the parts no, not so complied with the reasons for not doing so including evidence that you can substantiate warning consequences of failure to comply with this notice so then we've got should you fail to comply with this notice you can screenshot that we're on the last uh, page area as i've said this document is 90 
90% complete and um, we'll see on the next document how it is signed off, uh, autographed, referenced and authorised autonomously. So uh, yours sincerely autographed by Jane, uh, David, John, Steve, <coughs> Kevin, whichever. And it's got the syntax, as we believe is correct, paying special attention to full colons and hyphens, dashes, and not mixing them together. That's the end of the uh, data protection, GDPR, DSAR to the DVLA. So it's a masterpiece that is very powerful work of art. It's not a masterpiece because I've done it on behalf of SPLSPro.com. It's a masterpiece because the principality of it, of its jurisdiction, all right, it doesn't give much room for manoeuvre. Move on to the next document I'm going to show you. All right, notice the layout for the uh, lettering is the same. Tony, good day. I thought I heard somebody... Uh, saying Shabba, welcome, thank you for joining. Don't share this, it's unlisted and it's um, it's just for splspro.com, private domain, trust supporters, and it's for my channel supporters of Indiglow. I realise I didn't give much notice other than last night. I did a post on Indie community pages saying that I will be doing a video reference uh, agency title property correction for the driver vehicle licensing agency I posted a video regarding agency correction and um, for you to look at the c of agents the agency the papa c you know um, many many c's i've recently found the dirac c but we'll get into that later <laughs> that's not relevant but you know me and my c's i see that you see on the high c's we are no longer sailing and we've found dry land. Again, you will see the justification of the uh, document and how this is set out with the right hand top size. It's got the sender's details, Jane Doe. All right, care of address, that's important. You put CO because it's not the address of the, uh, the living sentient flesh and blood living and breathing even though Jane Doe is referenced as uh, private with the correct syntax there in red the blue is the care of office addressed for such correspondence business office it's not public your home is your castle castle there are in castle sorry your castle and uh, so therefore care of is important and postcode in brackets all right postcodes themselves the chat room when this goes public or anybody watching now can uh, tell me the significance of a postcode. Uh, Brother Stephen knows this well, and so do some of you. And square brackets, not the typically round standard brackets. Again, there's a reason for that. Address is non-commercial without the UK. And if it, you could put their private residence, should you wish, you would put a reference number and the date of uh, authorising you know this document here so that's uh, the sender's details top and right um, you have rights which are on your right hand um, to the right of God the Lord sit the council of God's right hand man um, archangels Michael Gabriel etc you have rights in a court scenario to the right of the judge these layouts and terminologies aren't just by chance okay so there's a reason why it's on the right hand side. All right, uh, I'll look at your comments afterwards, Tony. Thank you for that. I can see them popping up, uh, keep them coming. Then we've got the respondent's address on the left and lower, lower left. And, uh, Julie Leonard, registered office, DVLA. Uh, you can screenshot that. Uh, you've got the registered England and Wales, Dunn's registered number. Telephone switchboard fax, her website again, just like on the GDPR notice I've showed you. Um, we've got the principal um, in office that's appointed to drive a vehicle licensing agency under the authority of the ministers in government to act. The Transport Secretary, Mr. Grant Shapps. You've got his email at the Department for Transport 
Google UK, telephone, switchboard and fax. And we've got the Department for Transport Address, London, Great Minster House, not Minister, but Minster, like Monster, but with an I instead of the O. You've got the Duns number for Department for Transport, DFT. This one, I've copied the header from the previous one, it's page five of five, but I believe there's about 11. <laughs> All right, again, under that, we've got the Postal, U Universal Postal Union Postal Special Delivery Number, which as I explained just at the beginning, you take this sticker that the post office give you and put on the envelope for that assigned special delivery and you ask them or you would put the little thin strip onto the, into that space there because once the recipient receives the envelope with the notice or letter inside, and you don't do this. They could open that and bin the contents and say, you sent me a blank envelope. I'm ever so sorry about that because only the envelope is, is referenced as recorded, not the contents. So we reference the contents to the outside by affixing that uh, there is a label especially for the post office to do this. So then when Royal Mail are carrying it and delivering it, it will all be as should be. <clears throat> One of 11, allegedly, not five. So you see that uh, area there, I will correct. Dear Julie, all word herein, or as the afternoon defines them, written in plain English, do not convert into legalese. For the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt, this notice is written commanding the concise English language using OED and is not to be converted into legalese. And I'll draw your professional attention to the following points wherein DVLA should be taken to read the DVLA or any associated agency. It is my understanding that when a thing becomes registered with a body, you can think of birth registration as well, the body is registered to or with, it takes the ownership of said thing. And a thing is what? Well, it's denoted by a capital letter and it has a name, a noun denotes a thing. Your name begins with a capital letter. That's why we don't subscribe to names. We have a calling. We are sometimes known to go by a name, but only when it's a benefit to us. But things have name, non-biological things, vehicles, cars, lorries, houses, property, it's things, property, tangible and intangible. At the top of every page, we've got the notice agent, notice the principal. And then we've got, it is my understanding that in this case, the thing in question is a device for use to aid roaming, commonly called a vehicle by the DVLA. It is my understanding that a womb man, legal person who registers property and or a vehicle forfeits their equitable title to own property in exchange for legal possessory title and is by way of self-registration. It is then given legal possessory rights in the position known as the public trustee, advised by way of issue of keeper, keepership, i.e. the right to keep or look after or store or use what is now in point of fact the property of the DVLA and a vehicle assigned via a signature with full public commercial liability Signature is the equitable asset on a V5 registration document. Now you may have been clever and put some kind of trust name there, or you may have put by Jane, by John, by Tony. And that's some way on the way to uh, stepping out of the uh, assigned legal signature with full liability, but it doesn't obviously remedy and get full disclosure. It's just a workaround in some ways. Autographing, we would put as on behalf of PP and so forth. We would now require full disclosure is required on said V5 keeper document. It is my understanding that at the point of voluntary registration and by doing so, the trustee with the possessory legal title keepership must abide by the rules of the society or corporation or body to which the vehicle has been registered. Consequently, it is my understanding that subsequent trustees, keepers, keepership are not owners and that is stated in section Charlie 4, Charlie of the registration certificate, which states the registered keeper is not necessarily the legal owner. The V5 certificate does not prove proof of ownership, and that will be on the front of the certificate if you'd care, if you are in this situation and considering this path. Check out the front page of the V5 certificate, read it and weep. It is my understanding that this vital information is not fully and plainly disclosed on the contract, on the constructed 
a constructive trust agreement known as the legal v5 registration certificate now for a trust agreement and or contract to be valid there must be full disclosure there must be an offer and then an acceptance in trust law by way of title transfer transfer and is known as a constructive trust what we've got entered into and what we have um, initially all of us by default it follows that since this vital information is not shown clearly on the trust agreement or contract <laughs> and full disclosure is not offered it must be legally deemed that the agreement contract is legally null and void ab initio once this information comes to light the original constructive trust is dissolved by way of expression of the correct trust titles <coughs> me, 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 me. We are now in an agency relationship agreement by way of your appointment. It is my understanding that upon the registration, the vehicle is known as, and that's where the license plates would be going in for the two, for the um, blue iron horse and the pink tigra that, I, um, that we have uh, you know, at present, were registered with the DVLA. It is my understanding that the DVLA have previously taken and held equitable title and ownership of the vehicles known as at the moment of said registration it is my understanding that when the vehicles came into the possession of myself believing to be the new equitable title owner i jane was in point of fact only purchasing the legal possessory right of use and not the right to own the property known in trust law as the set law and the triangles yes and what positions who has who where is the king in the triangle um, Abrahamically speaking, you'd say grantor, um, trust legally, um, property titles, right, equitable title, you'd say set law at the top. And then we have trustee and beneficiary at the bottom there. And in a trust, if you are in fact trustee and beneficiary, automatically that will dissolve the trust. You cannot be both trustee and beneficiary. Um, trust law 101, governed by equitable standards, equitable equity itself. This vital information was kept from being disclosed to myself on the previous constructive trust agreement or contract non-disclosed and without full disclosure regarding the transfer of titles and property rights or rights within said public constructive trust. Our one has obtained first-hand knowledge of the facts of the matters and is hereby expressing an agency relationship, driver vehicle licensing agency whereby I am the beneficiary and you are appointed trustee in your fiduciary capacity, along with the Secretary of State for Transport. The previous constructive trust has been dissolved by way of expressing the correct true trust titles, much like in a court-based scenario or in any other trust-based scenario. Once you express your um, believed uh, honourable, correct, you know, correction of trust relationships the new trust stands and the old constructed set of kv trust dissolves all right the right honorable mr grant shaps is the prince of i've spelled that wrong prince of ple that's also correct um trustee not the principal we are the principal grant shaps would be the principal trustee this is julie leonard agent agency trustee in office for the dvla Jane Doe would be the set law and the beneficiary and the principal. So I will put principal after or here, just principal, set law and beneficiary, and I will change that to PLA. In consequence, I hereby serve notice and state clearly, specifically and unequivocally, that under the laws and customs of England, which Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has sworn to protect, I make claim to what is rightly, justly and lawfully mine. In addition to the above, by way of my instrument known as a private bill of sale and independent witnesses to these facts. In essence, the private assets have now consequently been exported from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and titles rights are now within a private and non-UK of GB jurisdiction. The private parties concerned now claim full, lawful, equitable title rights, allodial title and asset control ownership of the assets previously known to the DVLA by way of license plates one two now known by way of their unique referenceable one-of-a-kind chassis number blue iron horsey is number one and the pink tigra will be number two 
and that's where the chassis VIN number, if you're international, VIN chassis will go. Boom Shanka. These private assets are lawfully in our possession. I now as set law a beneficiary and by way of this notice to you, Julie, appoint you in office as the state trustee agent with regards to all legal matters as the chief executive of the driver and vehicle licensing agency by way of authority and appointment by the Secretary of State for Transport, the principal, there we go, PLE, the principal of the directorate in these matters, the Right Honourable Mr Grant Shapps, governable under the ministerial codes once they are appointed as trustee in office. So the act is trustees in office publicly and they can act as trustees in office on behalf of our estates privately as well so they operate in two more than two capacities but at this point they're in office doing transport issues airport issues uh, covid issues and so forth for the transport airports and so forth and then we can appoint them for us um, in our um, trust relationships as trustee as well I do recall and have the BBC Radio 4 news segment whereby Mr Grant Shouts openly and publicly broadcasted by way of a verbal statement on national radio that the United Kingdom of Great Britain is not a police state. When he was being interviewed in the early morning on the Today Show with regards to transport issues at the airports and concerning Corona COVID-19 issues, the United Kingdom of Great Britain is a paper-based legal entity, a trust within England and Wales appointed by Her Majesty the Queen II and her formed government. The United Kingdom of Great Britain is one of the five permanent member nation states that reside on the United Nations Security Council after the last Great War and has signed and ratified the international political, religious and social covenants and treaties respectively. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, and ignorance of asserted and retained unalienable God-given rights shall be considered as an act of war. Abuse of rights is abuse of property and tantamount to a form of homeland terrorism with regards to the correction and expression of the previously misconstrued constructive trust relationships. And with regard to you, Julie, now being appointed in office, trustees disclaiming their now lawfully appointed duties and with regards to the 10 precepts, axioms and maxims of commercial law and cross-reference with the maxims of equity shall be held to account. So if they don't do their job, they don't have a choice. You're not asking them to be trusty, you're appointing them. And if they disclaim their duties, they should be held to account. Note, I shall now enjoy the use of traveling non-commercially and with my Christian private capacity freely on roads and highways and on private land, executing my deeds with conscionable, reasonable care, and responsibility at all times to third parties so long as I am not acting or involved in commerce as I travel privately going about my day in service to Christ Jesus. Now we've talked about the uh, Abrahamic faith, Judaism and Christianity all based on Abraham, Ibrahim and you can all use this um, not just for England, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants or Catholics or the like, it's, uh, it will be uh, paralleled internationally. But here on England's soil, where the United Kingdom is overlaid as a paper-based trust relationship, we have the merger of state and church in America. I'm afraid you have the separation of church and state. So that's why we don't follow America and um, look who owns who. The boats went out from England to claim America and they planted the flag and they colonised the lands, slaughtered the indigenous origines and then claimed it. But who owns England it goes all the way back to the Vatican, Vatican City. And as we've explained, so there is a chain here. All right. And we look at that. So you can say you're wrong, David, or UCC, live life, claim. You, you do what you want and as you wish. My inner standing overstanding, understanding and king standing is slightly different, which is why um, we do what we do. There is no PLG, private light goods vehicle. Goods are for commercial trade market. Com commerce being defined as the buying and selling of goods for the benefit of the operator of the conveyance. I claim and retain my full lawful, lawful, 
God-given unalienable rights, allodial title and full beneficial rights to the private trust assets, irrespective of any faulty understanding and unconscionable misconstrued relationships as expressed above. I retain and assert my lawful, unalienable and God-given lawful rights to roam and use any form of private conveyance on roads and highways without let, hindrance, levy, license or duty, as specified within all British passports of that I am the holder of, as it is written and expressed within our Christian and Abrahamic law, seen as taking the Father's name in vain. We, Jane and Doe, are to implement the instrumentation. Now, if you've got a British passport or you've got a passport and you're watching this uh, across the ponds, have a look at the, big, the front paragraphs and see what it is written there about travelling rights, let, hindrance, levy and etc. And uh, British soil, English soil, it was a British citizen on the passport. It's got a statement from Her Majesty the Queen. I'll get that out another time and I'll screenshot it and we'll go through that if you haven't got a passport for your person. I am not a British citizen, nor do I subscribe to the title of Mr. Mr. and or public legal name. Do not try and entitle me to that. The Home Office Secretary of State shall be assisting I with the administration of the required private status, standing and capacity corrections. I shall be moving from an assumed public legal person to a private, lawful, authentic, flesh and blood, breathing, sentient, corporal, Christian, sovereign man, as per the Lord God's instructions, lest we be deceived. God is no respecter of persons, personas, true, natural, juridical, or other. Feel free to check the quoted reference within all British passports and the notice contained within from Her Majesty Queen the Second. I also reference and invoke my fundamental rights. Now I draw your attention to the human rights, GDPRD side that I've just shown you. And I urge you to, to think and, and look. So uh, invoked be the various political, social and religious cultural rights contained within the various ratified treaties and covenants set out within the International United Nations Human Rights and Charters, referenceable via the DSAR sent along enclosed with this notice to you, Julie. My God-given Abrahamic unalienable rights as a Christian ambassador and as detailed within this instrument. I claim that any consent which may have been either expressed or tacitly acquiesced to and or implied by myself in regard to or in relation to any statute regulating the operation of any form of conveyance on roads and highways and private property is hereby now rescinded, revoked and withdrawn. I claim that the registration of and with DVLA is now withdrawn for the reasons given to you within this notice. I require that our private assets are to be exempt from registration and said fraudulent, deceptive public registration now be voided or a private capacity be assigned to them. Either or, I'm not sure of their policy. There's a lot of conflicting information on YouTube and, um, and, and in the Facebook arena and on media platforms, so I'm doing it my way and, and uh, we shall see what happens. I shall require to be informed of your company's process on how to return the DVLA's registration plates, their, their property, not mine, and I shall display an insignia with the word private. Okay, our private assets are uniquely identifiable by their unique one of a kind chassis number only, and any other uniquely identifiable markings, parts, modifications from standards. So if there's uh, 10 red Ferraris, there's some with dents and some with, um, you know, uh, rust patches and some with hydrogen engine accessories fitted and that alongside the chassis number. Each of those red Ferraris will be identifiable by their particulars, you know, uh, changes. I wouldn't say modifications. I'd be careful with that word. You can want to modify the engine in any way, um, really, but you can suspension and uprating the brakes and different things like that, uh, body kits, you know, so... They're uniquely referenceable in many ways, but the ultimate uniquely identifiable way before registration plates were uh, introduced was the chassis number. There shall be no arresting when you have a heart attack and your heart stops. You have a heart arrest. So arrest means to stop. It doesn't mean to be 
bonded and taken away, stopped in your duty. When somebody stops you, halt, papers please, you are being arrested. So there should be no arresting of stopping for public civil issues. As per my notices to the Home Secretary, Crown rank and file officers of the state, the generals and secretaries alike, there shall be an annual issue of a valid MOT. I think it's beneficial to me for the private trust assets to always be checked by somebody and uh, I know that then I and others will be safe. It takes down the, uh, the risk of accidents and even though the day of the MOT the checks there are valid for that day on that day of the MOT it is deemed safe but the day after a week after a month after MOT doesn't stand because time has passed and things could have changed but every year once a day it is looked at and you can generally keep safe that way okay each to their own that is my wish and requirement we value life it's a goodwill gesture it's worthy of doing it's beneficial to me I'm going to do it you do as you wish. Um, the road tax charges shall now need to be re reviewed additionally. One of the assets has an on-demand hydrogen accessory fitted and as such has ultra low emissions consistently for the last three years. See certificates enclosed. The Lord God and Christ Jesus offer I assurances with respect to public commercial insurance. This shall also require further clarification and with consideration to the Home Office principles in office. As per my verbal and previous written instructions to the DVLA within 2019, via notices and telephone calls to the agents named, there was a video on my channel where I have rang up, uh, it's on Indiglo, DVLA, reference private property titles, etc. Both V5 logbooks were told by the agent to be sent back by me alongside with proof of a bill of sale and title and transfers of property. And on that call, he said, so you're telling me the DVLA no longer owns the property? I said, that's what I'm telling you. And under the governance and covenants of data protection, GDPR, a company cannot knowingly hold incorrect information on their files. You know, so we are boxing clever here, no vexation, no malice, no common law, lawful descent, no Magna Carta, no Constitution, no Ecclesia, no UCC, Admiralty Maritime. We're going a different way. Notices have been served by way of special delivery to the DVLA and Secretary of State for Transport, Mr Grant Shapps, in addition to yourself. I am prepared to consent and shall allow sufficient details to be recorded with you, such as to enable lawful contracts in connection with said assets, Via the care of our private, via the care of our private non-commercial care of location given within this notice, I claim the right to fix a reference plate non-registered insignia of my choosing on the private iron horses that are private trust assets, formerly known as registration and registration chassis numbers one and two specific to my design, colour and style, and record my chosen insignia, reference of private, it might say private, and then it might say DGS or something on there, as well as private, because if we all have um, private on the plate when we go and do this, then it will be very confusing. So we need to recognise that we need to maybe uniquely reference that in some way. So that any third party may identify and refer to in such cases of harm or injury caused to us, I, you, or in the event of injury sustained by myself, private parties due to incident whilst travelling within the private asset iron horse. So if we cause injury to some or they cause injury to us, it is then referenceable. I claim the right to use or accept any long non legalese word or words to describe a private asset. Horse, formerly conveyance, being owned and used by myself, Jane Doe. Or words used to describe the operation of the conveyance, which will include, but is not limited to, private trust asset, iron horse, vehicle, pleasure craft, traveller, motor vehicle, driver, driving car, motorcycle, or any word in relation to that private asset as per the OED Oxford Editions Dictionary, and that the use or acceptance of those words does not in any way imply consent to stand under any statute. 
and I repeat for the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt this notice is written in the I'll just say English there I'm not going to have Anglo in English language using OED and is not to be converted into legalese do not securitize this instrument and there is a non-negotiable unilateral schedule of fees I present and I shall claim my non-negotiable unilateral schedule of fees regarding my authentic, sovereign, sovereign, natural, born, unalienable, God-given, Abrahamic lawful rights to freely travel on Her Majesty's roads and highways as detailed below. Now the roads are built by man, for man, with um, man's sweat equity, so I don't believe that they are the uh, Majesty's roads and highways, they're Roman roads and highways, and uh, we look going back all the way to Roman times and if you were non-commercial you could travel with your horse and car quite freely and there's a lot of uh, history to do with that but for the time being is summarize it as that okay and there is a 500 GB pounds per hour or portion thereof per individual reasonably involved for any transgressions by police officers constables government principals or their agents or participants in the legal system of justice or should i jane doe be stopped by a uniformed or non-uniformed officer doing so without reasonable cause or prevented in going about my lawful peaceful right to roam questioned interrogated or in any way detained harassed or otherwise regulated 5,000 GB pounds per hour per individual reasonably involved. Should I be handcuffed, arrested, abducted, transported, incarcerated or subject to any adjudication, arbitrary, administrative, civil or even civil bordering, bordering criminal because they call it a criminal offence. It's either criminal or it's offence. They're either rules or they're laws. We know that. So their terminology for understanding of is, is as such. Where there is no harm to another life, breach of common law, no man or woman that has been harmed without my express written and notarised consent. Queen Elizabeth II shall not be recognised as a victim as her government has fraudulently tricked, usurped, subjugated and subrogated I, womb man, Jane. 20,000 GB pounds in addition to any compensation awarded per individual reasonably involved. Should violence be used against either myself or those parties under my care and protection or damage or loss to my privately owned or borrowed or hired private assets, it says asses there, <laughs> assets, modes of private travel, 50,000 GB pounds per day if any personal property is taken from me without my express written and notarised consent and 500,000 pounds GB per individual reasonably involved for any violence brought against me, my family or anyone under my care. And if I am ever forced, the rules of law, the force of law, the police force, if we are ever forced to suffer the effects of what has come to be known as non-lethal weapon, such as taser, sprays, batons and the force of public law without my express written and notarised consent. The force of law is governed under the international rule of public secular Roman law and by the ministers in public government office and by the ministerial codes respectively, as have been in the news lately regarding Brexit, Northern Ireland border, the bullying by Priti Patel, Nicola Sturgeon, the list is massive. Should be no doubt in your mind where I'm coming from and how we can reference that, um, articulate it and um, without a shadow of a doubt. You see how we've moved and where we moved to and how we moved to and why we moved to. Again, there's no legal advice in any of this. OK, it's uh, it's simply lawful administration of estates and correction of misconstrued relationships, which reside at law, not legal. The public is legal. The private is lawful. I retain and reclaim my rights to convene a proper Supreme High Court jure. There is no D in that. All right, when you see, oops, too much magnification, court jour, okay, there, in order to counterclaim or repeal and lawfully address any potential criminal actions of any police officers, government officials, principals, or agents, or participants, I believe that says, in the system of justice, 
having been served notice of this claim, fail to dispute or discuss or make lawful counterclaim and then interfere by act or remission with the lawful exercise of property claim and established rights and freedoms by way of the Supreme Courts of Justice. I retain and claim the right to deal with any counterclaims or disputes publicly and in an open forum using discussion and negotiation and have and to have presentation, witnesses, and shall capture with both video and audio evidence of said discussion and negotiation for whatever lawful purpose I see fit. It is my understanding that pursuant to respondent's dishonour of my previous notices to you, the respondent, you affirm that affiant has already procured the tacit agreement of respondent and that all statements set forth in this affidavit are factually correct, true and complete, if no timely rebuttal, it is affirmed. Now you will notice this document is, uh, there's a version one in the Proclamation of Sovereignty, part two, version one. All right, I've already said that that document is on version one, all right, and it needs amending and is open to correction. Here is the correction. So you will see by looking at that, which was given to me on the public domain, um, that it's been corrected and now this is my work of that original presentment which is found at the latter part of a proclamation of sovereignty explained part two version one entitled or subtitled v coactus so if you care to look at that and then look at what is here it's massively different it's been changed and corrected nearly 80 percent that being 30 days from the date of any and all notices so we give them 30 days to respond case and point references, the common law right to travel in detail, right to travel fully explained. This article is aimed squarely at England and the United Kingdom of GB, legislation.gov.uk, the government's own website covering legally the full content of statutes and acts, covers legislation for Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales, Northern Ireland, not the Southern Republic of Ireland. Halsbury's law of England is another essential component in our quest for truth currently edited by Baron McKay of Clash Fern. I believe that must be Scotland, okay, Baron McKay of Clash Fern. I urge you to always do your own due diligence, you watching now and the recipient respondents should do so. The best place to start is by searching the database of Halsbury's Laws of England here. And there's alexisweb.co.uk sources of Halsbury's Laws of England. The House of Lords, the UK Parliament website and many other sources are useful too and these form part of my overall discovery in relation to these complex legal matters. I shall give you the exact case laws which you can then verify for yourselves, my scribes and also for the recipient respondent. The case law in date order are the following. R.V. Donovan in delivering the judgment of the Court of Criminal Appeal. Swift J said... If an act is unlawful in the sense of being in itself a criminal act, it is plain that it cannot be rendered lawful because the person whose detriment it is done consents to it. No person can license another to commit a crime. Justice Swift is telling us that driving without a, any government documents such as licenses, MOTs, etc. cannot be of itself criminal as the government licenses licenses these acts and therefore they cannot be criminal. This is still a leading case as can be seen from this document which can be found on the House of Lords website, not SPLS Pro, not Common Law International, not Free Man on the Land, not Lawful Dissent, not the British Constitution, but the House of Lords own website. There's the link to the House of Lords own website there. You've got Ex Parte Lewis 1888, Wills J said regarding the public right of passage, the only dedication in a legal sense that we are aware of is that of a public right of passage of which the legal description is a right for all Her Majesty's subjects at all seasons of the year freely and at their will to pass and repass without let or hindrance. Now I'm not one of Her Majesty's subjects, but your driver is, your driver. Um, we need to talk about that a little bit there because that's a little bit of a, a confusing area for some. All right, but it's worthy of reference anyway. 
This makes the point that one may or can travel freely and that you can pass without let to hinder or to stand in the way of or hindrance obstruction. See the front pages of any British passport. The phrase without let or hindrance, meaning without impediment, something that is free to progress and without arresting being unduly stopped. Read the whole piece in the context of the case at the House of Lords here. It is often interesting to look up some of the other case law cited in a judgment too. Discovery is a, is a wonderful thing. Delta Papa Papa versus Jones and another. 1999, Lord Irvine LC. The law should not make unlawful what is commonplace and well accepted. The law should not make unlawful what is commonplace and well accepted. Be white selector. Lord Irvine makes the point that one day you are a farmer with a shotgun. The next you are a criminal because you do not have a license for it. A license has been required since 1962. See legislation.gov UK and there's the link there for that. See the UK of GB Parliament House of Lords document here for a full transcript of the case. There it is. In red, grandfather rights are to be considered. My grandfather first showed myself how to privately commute, which is true, he actually did. And when I brought this up, somebody told me many years ago, there's such a thing as grandfather rights, but I have no reference at the minute to citate and uh, I need help with that one. But I shall continue on and find what I can find, which is why that's in red there. These cases help our understanding of and help to define the common law right to travel. But you don't like common law, David. No, we say common law is not to be used for defence and protection and retainment of rights and title rights to property. OK, but the common law right to travel, SPLS Pro and I, David, recognize and enforce we, in, we recognize common law we just use it in its correct remits argument in the legal realm all right there's a common law right to travel argument in the legal realm and we see that and you hear me say it okay so those that say david doesn't you're wrong i trust that this helps the met constables officers of the law rank and file police and other law professionals themselves as I'm sure many of them would rather be chasing and prosecuting real criminals and solving true crimes. Time and public money efficiently spent. Another common concern seems to be whether solicitors act for the beneficiary or the courts. Or this should help focus the argument and dispel another myth or two. In the famous case of Bachelor versus Patterson and Mackesy, 1876, which establishes that solicitors are officers of the court and owe the court various duties which can transcend duties owned to a client but generally when a counsel is employed the solicitor is bound to follow his instructions they are licensed to have a sworn solemn oath to the crown london sun temple bar association and as such cannot damage the crown state in england rondell versus worley 1969 case established that solicitors should not blindly follow counsel this obviously has implications for questions of negligence when they arise in the context of the conduct of hearings. In the above case, the client decided to sue his former solicitor in relation to his conduct of the trial, claiming that his solicitor had been negligent. He advanced a human rights argument that he had been denied a fair trial because of negligence and claimed a miscarriage of justice had resulted. Again, the hinge pin on that, not common law, not Magna Carta not constitution, not lawful and rebellion, human rights. All right, so when I said fundamental, internationally, ministerial code, I hope you're hearing and I hope you, you are getting a smile upon the face. He did not aver that he would have been acquitted, but for this negligence, many books and aspects of law cost well over £1,000, including Green's litigation styles and indeed Halsbury's Laws of England, which costs uh, are not con inconsiderable sum of £10,000. We are informed that ignorance of the public secular Roman civil law is no defence. How can we possibly understand the law when it is prohibit prohibitively expensive to buy such books and they are not available in my or your local library for the same reason? Hence why when I built splspro.com 
we have the literature library and resource bulk, which is a private access resource library and vault for those reasons to share and the knowledge, knowledge is power. Hence my statement of no consent and no contract, also due to the high amount of statutory codes. How many statutory codes are in play at the minute? And do you know them all? Because ignorance is no defence. And the laws of government and the law society. Of course, this seems a deliberate attempt to keep the general public in a state of ignorance so that administrative arbitrators of civil courts can unlawfully steal our assets and credits. By the way, Lord Halsbury was a very interesting man, and I'll finish by quoting a piece from that excellent, though expensive work that bears his name. <coughs> me, 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 me. It is a constitutional principle that the assent of the Queen and Parliament is prerequisite to the establishment of a court which can operate a system of administrative law in Her Majesty's Courts of England and Wales. This was confirmed by Lord Denning, during the debates on the European Communities Amendment Bill, October 1986. There is our judicial system deriving from the Crown as the source of the fountain of justice. No court can be set up in England. No court can exist in England except by the authority of the Queen and Parliament. What, what? That has been so ever since the Bill of Rights. Now we know that administrative courts are unconstitutional and have no constitutional authority derived from Parliament. What? Yes, this is why we do what we do. Are you hearing? The pen is dropping. We've been led down the garden path for too long. And those mainstream narrative thought leaders won't speak to me because of these exact reasons. And I've had to come up as the underdog and do all of this with a small amount of minds whilst getting attacked, besmirched and um, defamation of character, slander and liable. OK, courts are for business purposes, pure and simple. There is no justice there. Look at the postmasters and etc. What's going off? Look at the uh, COVID fines. Look at the uh, issuing of them and uh, go to the front pages of SPLSPRO.com and look at the news stories I've put there recently and then get back to me. Ergo, there is no authority for administrative courts in this country and no act can be passed to legitimise them because of the constitutional restraints placed upon Her Majesty at coronation. Not constitutional for I, not constitutional for you, but for the ones in the system which would be Her Majesty touched upon in the previous above quote. No act can be passed to legitimise the lower administrative courts because of our constitutional restraints placed upon Her Majesty. Sorry, equity shall not aid a volunteer. Hence why we shall not consent to a contract with regards to any and all public civil charges and claims. I shall not be taking the father's name in vain. End quote for this article by Lord Halsbury Harding Stanley Gifford, British statesman, 1823 to 1921. My lords. I have more than once had occasion to say that in construing a statute, I believe the worst person to construe it is the person who is responsible for its draft. 1902 appeals cases. Note the date when stuff started to go pear shaped in particular more ways than one. Then we've got now. I'm proud of that. That is. That's some, that's some verbiage there, let me tell you, Julian Grant, argue with that. Licence and consideration, and then you've got various terminologies from licence and consideration. All right, permissions, certificate of documents, uh, permissions, licensing. Licence is like silence in a way, I'm dyslexic, and when I look at licence, I see silence. Okay, lie and sense, make sense of the lie. Um, is another thing that I see. Two words, lie and sense, silence, shh. To be licensed is to shut you up under wrong means, as I've explained and articulated in chronological, lawful date, reference, legal order, just then, if you'd care to take note. Um, permit, what a permit is. License is not a contract between the state and the licensee. It's a mere personal permit. And property, property or right, blah, blah, special purpose vehicle, conveying information, license with respect to real property is a privilege to go on premises, blah, blah, blah. Also certificate, exclusive license, letter of license, license, marriage, marriage license, permit, consideration, 
license, street and highways, a permit again, privilege, blah, 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 license by invitation, license by permission, license fee or tax, charge imposed by sovereign for a privilege, charge or fee, price paid to governmental or municipal authority, the term license tax includes blah, 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 fees extracted, a license fee, licensing amortization, all right, so licensing again, the sale of a license for use of patents, trademarks or other technology, you know, crown, copyright and so forth. Cross licensing, licensing power, license or the person who gives or grants a license. Okay, the grantor of the license is the license or like the testator and not, not the testators are to do with license, but the OR, all right, OR is the... Uh, Mortgagee, mortgage or the ending of words, the suffix and prefixes and some things like that we've brought to you, a key to look at. Then we go into some Latin, okay, and some uh, references to do with licentia, loquendi, um, licensate, licentinius, um, lewdness or lavaciousness. Latin again there, okay, civil law, uh, drive. All right, and drive again, you've got driver, driving, you've got car, you've got drover, shepherd and flock, see church, church, drover, drover, D-R-O-V-E-R, -E shepherd, flock, all right, <laughs> chattel, uh, I've explained why the shepherd keeps lambs to fleece them before he slaughters them and then he eats them, so uh, make of that what you will, carriage, Okay, uh, horse and carriage, hackney carriage, horsepower, tailpipe, tailgate. Transport, various transports there, traveling, travel, traveler. And then we're coming to the sign off. Yours sincerely, autographed by Jane Doe with Christ, Jane, ambassador and witness for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Sovereign Master, Lord of Lords and Prince of Peace, my advocate and surety, Jane and Doe, for on behalf of the legal, for and on behalf of the principal legal embodiment by the title, title of Mrs. Jane Doe, for and on behalf of the Attorney General of the House of Doe, for and on behalf of Princess Jane House Doe, sole representative, interested third party, beneficiary and grantor, set law for Mrs. Jane Doe, private trust and estate, in Christos Reg, Jane Doe, Jaw, Sui, Juris, lay apostolate, all natural rights retained and reserved, none wavered, no claim of liability, without prejudice, without recourse, without the UK, non assumpsit I'm not sure about these UCCs, they may be taken off, um, but they are okay for certain jurisdictions and more need to be added. Uh, they're not necessarily the only ones you would use if you was to use them. Set law and principle trustee needs to come off. That's for a different, ignore that. Um, set law and principle can be used. Don't use trustee. Um, Jane Doe, I told you they were 99.9% .9 ready. I haven't much time, free time, upon hands. And I wanted to express um, what's going on here and why and how. And I'm going to use this in the private for now. OK, it will be released public soon. But for my way of saying thank you, love and blessings to my channel supporters, for the ones that support us in the private, I promised you for your um, kindness and your promises and credits to us and your time and support, you are to be rewarded first. The hands are clean. The public comes secondary. To, to what we're doing. There are ones out there that are emulating what we do as we originate, not imitate. We design specifically tailor-made and um, we have taken from many and various areas as you've seen, private and public, we have um, found a way out and the ones that are unconscionable that will not work with I, the trust, support us and help us shall be simply left till the last. Not everybody is a thief, magpie of magic and a thief of tradition, but there is a few. And I'm aware of most of them, what they're doing, what they've said, how they act, 
and um, they are in it for egotistical material monetary value for their own channels for their own um, gain and um, you know it makes me sad more than not angry at all I expect it so we have put things in place in order to repay on um, on a on a uh, on a trust conscionable loving clean hands doctrine basis um, and we are prepared to give this out to the public for free you see uh, it requires a bit more further work which we've done over this weekend and um, there will be a covering letter sent with this and there will be um, references to what references to road traffic act requires all drivers to hold a driving license which is valid and appropriate for the class or category of vehicle in order to drive legally on uk roads those holding a valid driving license issued outside of great britain may be permitted to drive here depending on the circumstances in addition the vehicle excess excise and registration act 1994 requires vehicles to be taxed unless they are properly declared as being used or kept off the public road a statutory off-road notification and are properly registered with the dvla there are no exceptions or exemptions from these requirements and or other requirements no there wouldn't be in a legal respect with regards for the licensing of drivers and the registration and taxing of vehicles notice that word don't have a vehicle the assets private trust assets not even private property that would be wrong if you are stopped by the police and found to be in breach of the law regarding your driving license and or vehicle then they will have no option but to report you for the offense offense i don't mind if i cause an offense that's not breaking the law is it offenses yes and crimes are two different things similarly if dvla receive any notification of such a breach then we will have no option but to take the necessary actions to enforce the law further information on how to ensure that you may drive legally no thank you doesn't happen on uk roads and to obtain the necessary documents to do so can be found all right and thank you for your letter to our chief executive as this matter has not been investigated by the complaints team it has been passed to us for reply and recorded at step one of our formal complaints procedure i sent them a notice this is not a notice do not treat it as a you know as a as a letter so um i need to uh, put that in um like i did here i believe this is not a letter do not treat it as such it is a notice served to you under the doctrine of notices yes it's so that's what would be going when i say it's nearly complete i'm just doing a proofread just so i can look at it from an outside point and whenever i do this things jump out at me when I'm doing it live that don't when I'm private in my own mind so when I break that train of thought and step out more errors and emissions are uh, given to me so these are legal advice and they're not complete but soon they will be <laughs> and we will issue a full reply within the next 10 working days if a full reply can't be issued within that time we will let you know why and when you can expect to receive it our complaints co procedure can be found at our website I sent the DVLA a notice they treated it like a complaint silly silly people bills of exchange you know Ooh, bill of sale under the bills of exchange for said trust assets furthermore what have we got in here that's interesting for you just to close down let me go back to obs see what i can see yeah I need to go to a different screen right there now this one zoom cam here we go just check i need to magnify this so hey i don't think there's anything on here that you can't see that's not available in the public domain so uh, other than the vehicle uh, registration that's going to be dealt with very very soon um upon the mot in 2020 i draw your attention to the engine temperature and the uh, gas results that have been found within that not point not seven 
Okay. That's signed by the, uh, the garage there. On the, the 9th, 2020. And then if I go to 2019, the efficiency and path of the, uh, the test. It was 0 0.02. 220,000 miles on a Volkswagen Turan 1.9 TDI engine. What? So in one year, and over 10,000 miles, it went from 0 0.02 to 0 0.07. When I say zero emissions have been achieved by hydrogen technology, they have. Um, you're allowed a 1.5 maximum efficiency output for hydrocarbons, noxes, and gases. And I've managed to get 0 0.02, 0 0.07 for 19 and 20 and 21 this year in September, I shall go back and see what they are, um, which will then, I will let, uh, I've got some numbers for, as this is motor related and horsey related, I've got some numbers for, um, the, obviously the DVLA, um, the Office of Low Emissions for Vehicles and Grant Shaps, and then um, in Birmingham from the 1st of June this year, 2021, they're going to implement the clean air restriction zones. And if you enter them without a Euro 6 diesel engine from 2015, they're going to start to issuing fines to in the form of penalty charge notifications. So I have an email for Birmingham um, local authority, which is cleanair at birmingham.gov.uk. Their phone number is 0121303. 1111. 11. Um, and uh, yes, um, I've uh, got an, uh, uh, an, ad an adapted engine um, which has got an accessory on it. The engine hasn't been modified and it's a hydrogen on demand accessory to get those results there. That can all be done and fitted for around about £300 to any diesel commercial engine. And you would visit um, www.hydrogen doctor. Dot com, or you would email myself at david at hydrogen-doctor.com. The video details will contain all of this. Um, and so I can prove that even though I have not got a Euro 6 diesel engine from the September 2015, this uh, 2005 1.9 TDI engine is actually probably within the tolerance output emission compliances for those such engines of a diesel 2015 Euro 6 nature, even though it's nowhere near a Euro 6 and it's 10 years prior to 2015, that being 2005. So therefore, based on my uh, results from the MOT exhaust emissions test results and diesel, you know, free acceleration smoke tests, um, I can prove that I should be able to be allowed to go in there based on my emissions and based on what I've said with regards to not being public, not being in commerce and in my private capacity as such there. So um, I do hope you're rubbing your hands with glee and getting very excited. We can beat the system and we can go with the flow and I have many, you know, things to talk about. Um, and the fact that it's been exported from out of UK and with the appointment and trust correction, I believe that's a strong argument, do you not think? So I'll go to the chat, I'll see uh, I'll see what go on. And, um, then we shall get off. Thank you for your time. I hope that's uh, warmed your cockles on this Saturday, the 1st of May. Is the first notice you have sent to the DVLA regarding vehicle property title? First notice was the GDPR. Oh, previously, yes, I've attempted um, in vain. And, um, as I've written out there, um, it's been tacitly agreed to by their acquiescence to the facts. So um, normally when we look at the three letter or three notice process on the conditional acceptance side, they go into a position of being noticed 21 days. They don't answer that. We send them a second notice, opportunity, you know, going into fall, opportunity to cure, and then a third notice of fall, and then it's a deadlock, stalemate, estoppel, and um, by way of tacit uh, acquiescence, they uh, they will be held to account. So 
it's all about enforcing and uh, managing Tony and uh, I've uh, sent things previously and they've treated them as complaints when they're notices. Again, I'm not legally obliged, lawfully obliged to explain to them the, uh, the ways and means of doing business correctly. So, um, hallelujah, in some respects, tacit and acquiescence ignorantly agreed by way of uh, same as what they deem us uh, to have tacitly agreed, you know, uh, ignorance is no defence. Look at the 10 legal maxims of commercial law. Those that fail to assert their rights, therefore have none. Those that do not know their rights, have no rights. Oh, that's not how we roll. That's not uh, conscionable. That's not honourable. So um, we will, there's further work to be done. Once these documents have been 100% perfected and a word perfect, as you see, there's some mistakes there. I will correct them, uh, the omissions and errors, and add in what I need to. And then there will be a covering letter sent, and there will be uh, evidences of my output emissions. Birmingham will be contacted, the Transport Secretary, Junie Leonard, the Office of Low Emissions for Vehicles, and then I shall sit back and wait. Then should I later be sent anything, and they haven't responded, I can't force them to respond. I can only have my paperwork precede me. Okay, And then later when it comes to defence in a... In a, um, in a court sense, a legal sense, I can put everything together, um, present the paperwork just before the dates of, and say, I refer you to my paperwork. I let the claimants respond. And when they're in a position of fault, default, fault, and um, they haven't, and they've tacitly acquiesced, then they're going to lose. So don't even take, man, you, I, whoever it is, to that place, because now you're going to have to stand schedule of fees. You're in a position of fault. You're going to lose by you know, default anyway in that scenario and our hands are clean. So uh, once again, what are we doing here? Why are we here? And uh, it's an open and closed case. No need for argument, no need for vexation. Paperwork's in, signed signatories, special delivery. Keep all of that together, put it together in your bundles and uh, off you go. Not a problem. Bosh. I thank you. I've got to get off. We're going to be live tonight. Those of you privileged to watch this now, I send you love, light and respect. And we will be back. I will be back definitely tonight, half eight, nine o'clock. And we'll do a private cast as we do every two weeks via splspro.com's private domain. And I will be uh, releasing this video to the public after all of the uh, ones that uh, support um, in the private. I've had a chance to look at it. As I promised, you get the first access. So well done, Tony. At least there was uh, one there saying what, what. And um, I want to say bless you, well done. And um, more, shall be, uh, more shall be given to you. And um, my covering letter isn't too important, but I shall be referencing previous correspondence again and what's happened. And uh, that's all we can do. You know, that's all we can do. You can't force them. You can't do magic. And you need to be prepared to stand and... Um, use and you see why I've done what I've done there. I can't do any more than that. All right. Excellent. Very enlightening. My honour, my duty to serve. All right. So thank you. Thank you for supporting um, SPLSPro.com, Indiglo. And also we have a backup channel on Tube, which some of you have found, SPLS space PRO. Good night. Good day.